Okay guys, so this week we were asked about uh, striking from the ground, uh, particularly from the bottom or a non-dominant position. So just a few uh, quick pointers for those type of situations. Keep their hands occupied. If, they're, if their hands are occupied trying to maintain balance and they're not going to be able to punch you, uh, do something to, to their head so that their head turns away. That way their, their center is off balance as well. That way you can escape. Uh, try to turn them away from you. That way there are less targets or less uh, weapons that are attacking you. Shift your body away from their center line, right? So just pivoting your hips so that you're more perpendicular versus being like just straight up and down with them. Also, if you're not comfortable on the ground for any reason, then you're not going to be able to implement any of these things. It's going to be very hard to say I'm going to poke them in the eye if you've never been on the ground before, right? So the first thing we want to show is framing. So you can frame from the top or the bottom, but it reminds us of the Fukino Kata. So I'm taking mount here. I got in a dominant position. I'm going to be trying to frame his arms or push his head away. And as he resists, all I'm going to do is just collapse my frame, my structure, and drop my elbow. So it's pretty much my body weight that's, that's dropping onto him, right? From here, and drop, drop. That way you're not, you're not taking so much time to try to throw a punch like that or, or getting yourself off balance by doing a wide swing because that's when they're able to, to flip you. So even if you have somebody in, in your guard, um, that universal frame that we've talked about before, like creating a, a shell, is good uh, to be able to at some point shift away from your opponent and then come back and, and pop them. If you can, what you want to try to get is, is to get from to the head. So here's where uh, a lot of like our the Nahanshis come in, come in useful. So you're framing this way, he's striking, he's punching, and then you're pushing this way, swimming his arms around, trying to be able to look for an opening. And again, the more you can shift your body away from his center, right here, uh, the better off you're going to be, right? Because he, he's going to be attacking you in this way. So if you can frame this way, and then you can close everything down and bring his head down into your it's your elbows and your and your fists and the like. So. Another thing to keep in mind is using submissions as a controlling position. So uh, the one I like to use, or the one I like to use the most, is like this arm crush position. So if I get here and I'm able to get this angle on him, and I get this type of arm bar lock. Instead of trying to work my way to try to tap him out and potentially him escaping, I can just hold this position and this is where all your strikes come in, right? Or you can start raking the elbow or you can start punching here. But as long as he has his elbow locked out here, he's not going to be able to posture back up. Because I want to avoid this. He comes back up and he starts wailing on me here. So if I can figure out a way to lock out his elbow, just like the, how we have it in kata, then I'm able to strike and do whatever I want. And break in. So from the Hanchi Sandan we have that big sweeping arm motion. So here it works kind of good if you can frame and wrap up their, their arm really close here, push their head away or, or strike it and then do the same body shift and this gives you a way to, to lock them down here. Just using like bottom fists to the side of the face, the back of the head and, the, and behind the ear. And if, if I can't do that, like then even just palming Again, also here, striking really hard with the palm of your hand right at the right into the ear will we'll definitely take care of an issue like that. So if you get this, uh, you know, this is a good spot where you want to be. Uh, and like, you know, once, once you're able to strike somebody hard enough there to get them off, you can always, you know, get out of there if you want to or, or finish it. You know, it's kind of up to you at that point. When you're striking, the end goal shouldn't be just to strike. It should be either getting back to your feet, ending the confrontation, or getting out of there escaping, right? So don't just stop after one attack. You need to use your attack as a launch point to do other techniques. Either submit them, or get up, or more attacks, right? More strikes. So a lot of times when you're in somebody's guard, they're gonna, their objective is going to be to pull you down. So you have to 
figure out a way to look for a weak spot. And then after that weak spot, you need to explode up. And you're gonna explode up in the sense that I'm not just pushing up here, I'm exploding up and posting my hips out. This is what gives me the room to really kind of explode, like slam back down into them. But again, don't be so fixated on only hitting with your with your bottom fist. I mean, that's the goal, but I mean, really all of this is good, right? So even if you kind of overextend and it hits there, that's totally fine. Having a one, two is a good way to throw somebody off, right? Because it's kind of hard to, to juggle both at the same time. Another thing to think about is uh, kicking while on the ground. It's not always trying to raise your leg up and kick them. You could hold on to a, a body part and pull them to your leg, right? So it works the same way. It's a push-pull motion. For example, he's in my half guard here, and I'm creating this frame. I'm trying to punch. Well, my, my knees also are here, and my hand's behind his head. So why don't I just, instead of trying to raise my knee to his face, I pull his face to my knee, and that should be able to cause some damage here, that, I, that way I can move on to something else, right? Same thing with this, whenever you see, whenever you're able to pull something towards you, most likely your knee's going to be able to drive forward as well. So these type of knees are very devastating since it's going that push-pull action. So another thing as well is sweeps, right? So usually when you're practicing ground stuff, you're, you're trying to do, you're trying to take care of your partner and trying to do your sweep very gracefully, but a lot of, uh, in a self-defense situation, these type of sweeps can be can be kicks as well, right? So instead of trying to slide my knee here, I'm going to be kicking his thigh or rubbing my rubbing my knee into his chest as I do this, right? Or even kicking this part down. So rather than a push, it's going to be a real heavy shove, just like in the hanjis here. Usually, that's going to topple him over a lot easier than trying to just push someone's knee when their body weight's already right there. And you see that motion in the Naihanchis, right? That cross step with that shove. Good? Yeah.